On the morning of June 1st, 2008, a massive fire ripped through Universal Studios and destroyed building 6197. Today we're going to talk about what was inside that building. Hey friends, welcome back to Vinylize. I am Jarrett New, and today we're gonna to be talking about the devastating 2008 Universal Music Group fire that a lot of y'all brought to my attention online, and I felt I should make this video to let everyone know exactly what happened. And we're also gonna talk about what this fire means for the music industry, and most importantly, how this whole event is gonna affect us as record collectors and people who just love music. So before we dive into all of that, today's song of the day is Sea Moon by Paul McCartney and Wings. And if you have a suggestion for a song of the day, post it in the comments down below and you might see it in a future video. All right, now getting back to the fire, you might be wondering if all this happened way back in 2008, why am I suddenly talking about it now? Well, the New York Times posted an article last month titled The Day the Music Burned, which kind of blew the lid off this whole thing. And basically what it revealed was that right after this major event, Universal Music Group, the world's largest record company, downplayed the significance of this fire and didn't really go into detail about what was destroyed. But hang on a second, I am getting way ahead of myself. Let's talk about what actually happened. So during the morning of June 1st, 2008, maintenance work were repairing the roof of one of the sets on the Universal lot. They had been using blow torches to heat the shingles on that roof, and after they finished the job and left for the night, one of those shingles caught fire, and the resulting blaze that followed consumed many buildings on the Universal lot. So if we look at this map right here, the fire started around this spot, spread to all these other areas, and finally ended up at building 6197. Now inside this massive 22,000 square foot warehouse sat the largest collection of the most important audio masters in the history of recorded music. These masters, which are the original recordings from artists such as Louis Armstrong, Aerosmith, Audio Slave, Chet Baker, Chuck Berry, Dave Brubeck, The Carpenters, Mama Cass, Ray Charles, Cher, Eric Clapton, John Coltrane, Bing Crosby, Sammy Davis Jr., Neil Diamond, Duke Ellington, Ella Fitzgerald, Peter Frampton, Aretha Franklin, Al Green, Guns N' Roses, Billy Holiday, Buddy Holly, John Lee Hooker, Iron Iron Butterfly, Etta James, Elton John, B.B. King, The Mamas and the Papas, Nine Inch Nails, Nirvana, No Doubt, The Police, Cat Stevens, Howlin' Wolf, Neil Young, Weezer, Rob Zombie, and many more that I don't have time to mention were sitting on shelves in that building when it burned to the ground. Now, according to this article from Billboard posted the very next day after the fire, an anonymous spokesperson from UMG speaking about the masters said, quote, we had no loss, but we now know that that was a lie. And the fact of the matter was that 500,000 songs were destroyed in that fire. Now, although Universal Music Group has copies of several of those recordings, the original masters had the best sound quality, and because of their historical significance, were both priceless and irreplaceable. So long story short, this really sucks. I mean, if you just think about all of the music we lost from labels like Decca, Chess, Impulse, MCA, ABC, A&M, Geffen, Interscope, and all of the rest that UMG owned the rights to and were burned up in that building, it makes you sad. It makes you angry. And it also makes you a little confused as to why they didn't store these masters in like some underground salt mine or something like that. You know what I mean? Like some place that was impervious to disasters like this and some place that was completely protected. Also, now that this information has come to light, I really hope that the other two major labels, Warner Music Group and Sony, seriously rethink the way that they store their masters so something like this will never happen to them. Now, what does this mean for us as record collectors and people who love music? Well, basically it means that there were entire decades worth of music on those shelves which were completely wiped away and now we'll never get to hear them so for example the master recording of etta james classic song at last was destroyed 
in this fire. So our only hope now is that UMG made copies of a lot of this music and stored them somewhere else. They wouldn't be the best sound quality, but I guess it's better than nothing. Now, sorry this video is kind of a downer, but since this event is gonna affect the records we hear and don't hear in the future, I felt it was pretty important to talk about. Also, if you want to read the entire article for yourself, I'll drop the link in the video description down below. Now, what do you think about this whole disaster? Share your grief with me down in the comments below. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already by clicking this red button right over here and hitting the bell notification so you won't miss out on the new videos. And most importantly of all, friends, don't let this news hit you too hard. Have an awesome day and keep spinning that vinyl.